I'm going to call the meeting to order. First thing is set adjust agenda. Any, uh, you need to add another executive session for personnel. Oh, goodness. To include the police chief. Uh, so I say do that first. Oh, do that one. If, so an executive yeah. session before the contract one. BSA section 313, and then there's a subsection for personnel. Okay. Uh, motion to approve an <clears throat> amended ag uh, agenda. Second. Uh, so motion by Danny, second by uh, Kaylee to approve the amended agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, communication from the audience. Anybody here to communicate anything that we're not going to hit on on our agenda? Um, I think we are you on the agenda or are you not? <laughs> You're not. Yes, now's the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, I guess we're here to ask if we can put, well, we're hoping to submit a funding request to Bernie Sanders Congressional Committee Directed Spending um, for the new Harvard Rescue building, the construction costs for that building. And if possible, we'd love to put a select board member or the town manager's name on the application as an advocate of the project. It's not necessary if you're not prepared to do that. I think it would strengthen the application. And this is for, um, so I should have asked you to take your name, Maya. Maya, no. Thank you. Um, and so this is for Harvard Rescue building a new building somewhere on Creamery Road, location to be determined as, as a result of the town planning study that we're have commissioned um and isn't it more as a result of their planning because we the location our the location will be determined oh. by our planning. their building we're happy to wait for the town to sort out where we should be okay but it makes sense to be raising money wired right yeah we we're, if we're ready to start the fundraising especially with this type of fundraising I think we'd be too late in the next cycle. Um, we're putting out our RFP for the build that we need to design and build. We find build companies. Um, so we will people be ready right towards the end of next year. And so the town of Hardwick is also going to be doing a project in the same location, but we would not be seeking it. Congressionally, congressionally directed spending um, award this year, right? I thought we were. We are. We are. Yeah. So we're putting one in for. Compete with ourselves. So we're putting in a letter. We're putting in Monday. an application uh, for Peter Welch's office. Through Welch's. We're actually. I can bring it up in my manager's report. We can talk about it. Yeah. Um, we're going to do. One for the fire department and one for the tap room. Based on conversations with Welch's office and NBDA today. Okay. This afternoon. All right. Are you just, is it okay if I talk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can say whatever. Um, and, and why not with Bernie Sanders as well? Or are they, should they be different? Um, we can. We have the option of putting two more in for with Bernie Sanders. It's we don't we don't know if we, we have the time to get four applications in, um, but it's in in the works. Um, so we're going for homeland security for um, the for mitigation funds for the garage and that or for the fire department to add to the, the FEMA mitigation, and then. Um, the community facility for the group. And then if the the thought is that they if they make it past the first round, then they'll see all the projects. Yeah. 
and they might try to pull us all together and force us to work together. That was kind of what the tone that we got from. Um, so then they could kind of get yeah, out of the entire projects. I feel that. And yeah. I don't want to be involved in a situation where they're going, to, they're going to be forced to make this. Well, that's just not. They're, they're not. not. They're going to choose somebody else. They're not. No. That's not, like, your kids can't get along. We're going to go over here. That's I don't. What I, would do. I don't think that's the result of it. I think they're they understand there's there's many needs for this location and many and they understand the complexity of the project and the complexity of the funding sources. Because we would be using some of the funds. <laughs> To rebuild a fire station in the current location, we would be used, they would allow us to move those funds up to Creamery Road. Maya, what does the application do? It's due on Monday. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is that like they look at the projects and they're looking to see they're trying to get as much federal money as they can. Mm -hmm. And some projects might cross mm -hmm. cross the boxes and some might not. So Multiple applications they encourage from from the town. Yeah. Multiple applications from the town. So, so, so this is like internal. This isn't like applying. One of the things that we were told today, Tracy and I, was that this is going to the congressional's office. They get to look at this and decide on it. If it's not fully complete, they'll they'll come back to us and and try to wiggle things around a little bit and try to make it work for them because they're they're not the ones they they take this and go to the committee with the stuff so it's not right it's not like we're applying for a grant right and we have to have all our t's crossed and guys dotted they're just seeing what's out there and they're still working with us and they're still working with us that's what i got from that. yeah because the process yes is that each mm -hmm. congressperson puts together their list of the projects they want to put forward. They bring it to the whole body and they try to get that, those projects included right. in the overall standing bill. Or so the library received the Lakey funds that way. And the so, Yellow Barn received yeah. a congressional direct spending too. Um, and there's this sweet spot, <laughs> they call it, of um, planning and construction. And they want to be like these projects need to be 18 to 20 months out. Yep. That's the the magic number because they don't want this money sitting there. They want spent. Yeah. My only concern, which has nothing to do with you with you and your request, it's more with us, is that we just approved spending money for our feasibility with a deadline of having that be done by next June, which is if it's eight, if we're looking at a, if we're looking at building something eighteen to twenty months out, well, like getting a plan by next June seems a little late in order to like then we're we have to approve something, get it built next fall or the following summer. It just for us seems a little bit fast, but maybe it doesn't matter for it the, is a little fast for that of a project of that complexity. But on the other hand, yeah. Just not putting a uh, letter in this time. Right. The next time, if there is a next time, it's going to be next year. Right. I think it's annual, and there isn't that we've been through quite a long stretch with no none of this. We're just coming out none of this nonsense. Right. Two years. Right. And so we don't know how to continue, and so we may as well. There's hundreds. Yeah. Of projects. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear about one tonight. Yes. There's hundreds of projects yeah. that get submitted. So I think we're we're stepping on we're stepping on ourselves way too early in the process. Meaning we should just submit submit the requests. Oh everybody's yeah. We everybody. should support everybody. The town should support everybody. Is there a concept of interest in that? We should support the request we want to put in for the relocation of the fire station. Yes. In our town garage. That's what we need to focus on. I have feel that very strongly that way. Right. There's an organization that is going to focus on their request. But they're asking for our signature, our support. Right. So then is there, is there, do we support it? Is there conflict of interest? If, if I don't think there are further. No, I don't. 
But I suppose, I mean, so this seat represents the taxpayers down the heart. Right. And none of these funds we're talking about are property tax revenue funds. No, but we're using them. Our job is to use them to, you know, to manage the expenses of the town government. Absolutely. So if we get a grant or something, then that's that's what I'm saying. It's it's it offsets our taxes. It does. So yeah. that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Other organizations, although their project may be good for hardware, if it it, it does compete, I, you're not. I don't know how grants work. It, it, you know, the pool's bigger. There's going to be somebody's grants. Only somebody. Only a certain number of people are going to get funded. Right, and none, so, of, and none of these projects or applications may make it past the first round. That's true, but I have to go back. Um, an additional reason why I heard of rescue, like the town support on this, um, we're, we've been working with the town the whole time on this project, um, but also we're on town land. And so I think that having harbor support for this project Will benefit the application. I don't disagree with that at all. So the fact that we have a new group here, faces asking, um, we we kind of lost the dialogue that we had in the last group that was here um, over where the land, you know, the, where the location was and such. Catch us up on that. Well, I think I'm pretty caught up. <laughs> I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, I'm going to be, I'll be quiet and, and see what you guys have to say about this. <laughs> How's that sound? So, um, I've been thinking about it some, and I think that it is, we are early in this process. It's not, we're not necessarily getting into a position on Monday where we, we're like locked in and, and we're, you know, necessarily competing with each other. I do think, I, to your point about where rep, this, these seats represent the taxpayers of Hardwick, um, but I think the taxpayers of Hardwick also benefit in a very substantial way from our rescue. And um, we're not, they're, in, in this case, they're not asking for our dollars, they're just asking for our um, support. General work. and and I think it I think it makes sense because especially in light of the fact that we do intend to find a, a space for them mm -hmm. in this Springbury Road project. I I would just say I, I'm in full support of Project Rescue and doing this and having and putting an application for it. What I'm had a little bit hesitant about for uh, for the town is. And I, I agree that we should be asking for money. It's great that it's an opportunity, but I'm always hesitant about asking for money before we have a plan. Yeah. And we don't have a plan yet. And so by applying for a grant, we're basically, we're not going to say no, if we get a grant, it'd be great if we got a grant, but if we don't have a plan, we don't have a budget and we don't have, and then we get money from the congressional office, then it puts us on the hook for coming up with a match or whatever else. And I think that's a little bit to your point, Danny is we're basically asking for money before we even know what the project is. And that's my only hesitation with our with our application. There's nothing to, I think the Heart of Rescue is farther ahead. They've got a design, they've got, you know, you've got a lot of work that is. They don't have a design. No, they don't. Well, they've done a lot of feasibility. design and the footprint. And, and, and their group's done a ton of work to yeah, put together what I they agree. want and what they need. We have not been able to do as much work as the town to put together what we need for the town garage. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of doing that. We've committed to coming up with a plan. I just think for us, like, I would love to be able to say, yes, the town of Harder should apply for this. But I feel hesitant doing it, not knowing how much exactly it's going to cost. Because that's kind of putting us on the hook for doing it in 20 months, which seems a little bit tight. Have we already applied for it? No. Deadline is Monday. Okay. And that so, was a letter. Well, we should be talking about it. Right. That's exactly yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. I think I think for me personally, like Harvick Rescue, has more of that more together. I think it makes sense. I'm in support of that. We can have another conversation maybe later in the meeting 
for doing your report about our application. I don't see any harm in applying for all of them in the sense, I mean, then, then it's out of our hands. It's their office, it's their responsibility to look at it and say, okay, this is feasible or this is not, and we're going to allocate funds here or there. And if they don't give the towns, you know, projects that money, then the harm will follow. And I'd rather have that be allocated to part of the rest. Because it's, I mean, this sounds like it's going to be one big complex. Um, it's not going to be. They've already said it. Don't have nothing to do with that. Well, it'll be a campus. One they're they're two campus. different buildings. Yeah, you're applying, they're applying for different. When did you guys hear that? That's what we put together. That's in the um, design. When that's in that. Yeah. That's what the the municipal technical assistance grant that was provided to us by NDBA. That's what the basis of that project is. That we're providing. But I thought that they were very clear about having their own building. Right. We're developing the building. layout, developing the layout of that campus of that property, and doing the engineering. And early architecture feasibility of that entire parcel of land. Sherry Farnish, she's not waiting. I'm happy to make a motion that we do a letter of support to the rescue for their congressional request. Is that right? Yeah. Congressional application. I can second that. The motion from Sherry to have the town um, to have the town manager write a letter. Draft the letter. From I think so. Just, just a name. Just yeah, a name. Yeah. Town manager signed as the town supporting the heart of rescue application. Yep. So that motion is from Sherry, and a second from Kaylee. Is there more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the aye. All right. Opposed? No. Okay. So motion carries. Thank you, everyone. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's well considered. We still need to work together and, um, uh, yeah, and apparently with our congressional representatives too, as this carries forward. All right. Any other communication from the audience? All right, hearing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Uh, next is um, select board to approve minutes from last time, which would it's people. First. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just reading. Should have changed that could, agenda. <laughs> could, yeah, it could not have been April 1st. March 21st. Uh, I can motion to approve the. Uh, meeting minutes of March 21st. Second last. So we have a motion from Kaylee to approve the minutes as written. Second from Tim. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to say because I could hear, remember? Oh, that's right. Four, so four ayes, one abstention, motion carries. Thank you. Um, next is town manager report by Mr. Upson. Okay, um, so we have a fully executed um, emergency watershed protection grant agreement. So we have uh, preparing an RFP for the third party engineer. So that's coming out. This is the emergency watershed protection. That's the three properties that were and like kind of armoring yep. the bank of the river places for the property. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, but that is good. Awesome. Um, there was some positives coming out of that at the end. 100% coverage of the sponsor. So, wow. yeah. Um, we can get talked about that in match. Yep. That's going to be fully covered. Wow. Yeah. Um, East Main Street Bridge, which is in on the town line of East Hardwick, or Hardwick and Greensboro. Uh, should be done and removed, and they should be mobilized at, or demobilized at this point. So that bridge, um, that project has been submitted to FEMA for reimbursement, um, the, the removal of the bridge. And then the design and the engineering of a new bridge is yet to begin. That was about ready to fall off the river, so we decided to get out of there and hurt. The Army Corps of Engineer and the State of Vermont was 
very uh, forthcoming with their permits for this one. So that, that was good. Um, we'll be doing three demos. Uh, we'll be taking the, the, the end now, the rest of the end, going, going the um, sewer structure out of that property, capping the, uh, the, the well, and then um, same thing up in East Hardwick on School Street. And um, we close at the end of the month on uh, Ron Sandals Place on Cherry Road. We'll be demoing that too. So those three properties. Uh, the two properties are the School Street property and this property are now town property. Um, and then uh, the Sandal property on Cherry Road will be at the end of the month. And then um, just kind of giving you and the town an update on the eclipse. Um, the, the emergency management and the Department of Tourism are expecting and planning for a, a large influx of travelers over the weekend. And on Monday. Like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It's a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm just making, finally making an announcement for it. So I didn't do so we didn't create panic. Um, but the, the skies, the, they've been watching the weather um, and the national news is now indicating that the best viewing will be in the Northeast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. um, there's another, um, another briefing on Sunday, but they're saying for people here, they're trying, so there's this, this app when the, with the red lines on the app, like the mapping show that there's traffic, then the app sends people on the secondary roads. <laughs> Automatically, there's no way to control it. So there will be a lot of people traveling on secondary roads and back roads and some towns are closing roads. Um, the town of Woodbury has decided to close the road from the Cabot Road to keep mm -hmm. people off of Nichols Ledge because of the, the nesting peregrine falcons. They're closing the whole Cabot Road? They're closing the road. Wow, no, yeah. it's closed. Okay. And they want, they want us to close. They want us to close. No. They want to close the Nichols The, the road goes on through. I don't know. Always on to Nichols Pond. Yeah, I think it's the oh, village. I thought Cabot Road was yeah, it's the very village to Cabot. Right. It yeah, is. no, sorry, you're right. They're closing the the Nichols Ledge Trail to Cabot. Oh, which is yeah, we well, yeah, also be it is close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah it media. should be a fun weekend and Monday. Yeah, I think it's and watch out for counterfeit uh, eclipse glasses because they're out there. They also mentioned that. What? Yeah. The check there's a number. Yeah. What? Check and make sure it's like an NFP number. Do we still have quite a few glasses? All of the ones that we gave out were counterfeit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We still have quite a few in the we town clerk's office. We have a lot here? of people have come. Okay. So yeah. do we have more that, like, tomorrow afternoon, since the memorial building will be closed, should maybe come downtown and be, uh, I don't know. The yeah, library still has a lot. Yeah, okay. I'm wondering. Okay. See that my We're open on the weekend, so and, and they're recyclable as well. There's a, there's I was just gonna say this. I was just gonna say that my prediction. I'd like to wager that there's at least fifty pairs of eclipse glasses on Main Street that yeah. we have to pick up. I bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And green up day is coming. Yeah. How many end up in the river? Yeah. 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 Stretch. So um, so that's what's going on. The eclipse. So fill up your gas tanks. Get some cash out of the ATM. <laughs> that's what they're telling them. That's that's what they're oh, yeah. excited. You all remember Y3K, K, right? Yeah. It'd <laughs> be fun. Can I old enough to remember Y3K? Yeah. No. Can, can I, I was in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask about the property? That that we yeah. have on. So you have to so is it I understand that we closed on two of them, the third one's gonna close. Town owns them. Um, yep. Is your office then responsible for hiring and overseeing the demolition and mm -hmm. whatever we have? Okay. Yeah, and that's all funded by the grant. 
the state grant. I know it's all funded, but yeah. it's additional work. And mm -hmm. uh, you're all this. Yeah, that's why I'm always said. Is it going to be outsourced, or are we going to try to get the town? No, we're not. Put it out. Okay. We're going to. Put it out to yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's just more projects that are being. It's a lot. Done. And then we yeah. we got to do a list of stuff. Kristen and Tam. Kristen and Tam rely a lot of us. Yeah, I'm doing a good job. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so that's great. Yeah. You just add more resources. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's good. Don't be worried. I'm not worried. I'm just pointing out that there's, as a result of the funding, there's quite a bit of extra work that falls to your own party. That's all. One reason why we just uh, added this was satellite. Right. And, and, it's not like that and you said it's already helpful. So yeah. it's good. And you started that efficiency. So. Yeah. Right. All right. Great. Hi. More questions? My only question is we sort of stuff the we sort of pause the question about the congressional application for us in order to approve the Harvard rescue. I wasn't sure if we wanted to put that if we want to talk about it more in the town mayor's report if we all felt we needed to make a motion for that. I mean typically if there's a I mean I think I'd like your approval to do to do it. I mean I was planning on doing it. If you don't want me to do it then I'll I won't I think there's nothing really to lose in submitting. Why would we not? Right. I mean, this project does not need to be slowed up. Exactly. I totally agree. I just wanted to make sure we we're all, because we kind of paused and then mm -hmm. approved that. So I just want to make sure we we're all I, the same. I totally agree with no. Danny. This has been dragging. And if we. My, my whole argument tonight is to try to strengthen our applications so we get that money for the club. We yeah. need for yeah. the town. Yeah. Not for other things. And and by just putting in the letter of interest for the two projects, you're gonna just enter into conversations with Welch's office essentially, and hopefully it'll move forward. It might not. I think we may as well try. Yeah, I mean we were basically told to do two requests yeah. for each office. Okay. Cool. Great. So we're we go. we're gonna we're gonna just pick one. Because I don't think we can get all four done before Monday. So that's fair. Do you want a motion from the board that we want you to do that, or do you want to just do it? I can just continue doing it. Carry on. Yeah. That's good. Um, and uh, all right. Next is road foreman report. Um, do you want to share anything about the? They were well when the roads had. There's areas that were dry enough to spot grade, um, and the back roads were feeling pretty good. Yeah, it was nice. Um, there were some bad spots, um, and they hauled some some stone, and then uh, the snow came. So they're plowing and plowing dirt. Oh, yeah. Um, another road thing. So our the Harder Farms Bridge. We, is that an agenda? That's yep, an agenda. It's an agenda. We'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And things are running somewhat okay. We got a truck that's having some problems, but usually has problems. I talked to Tony about that today. It sounds yeah. like that truck is really problematic. <laughs> we dumped a ton of, he said we put 30,000 into it this winter. Mm -hmm. No, no. Or total. Total. In the last. Year. In the last year, we put thirty thousand into it, roughly, and he's out there plowing. Right, no. yeah. and and he's out there plowing with it today. And the four wheel drive doesn't work, and it won't go up hills. Right, no, it won't go up Magro. It's great by my house, but it's not even a hill hardly. It's a problem vehicle. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get through the last bit of snow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Harvard Police Department reading. Thank you. So we uh, have our body cams. Uh, we have those. And as of last July, the uh, software upgrades for those uh, has been discontinued. So we've been using them. We applied for a grant back in June. Once I realized that was going to be done, we got the grant money for that. Uh, we are looking at purchasing all new body cameras. Uh, 
Right now, the estimate is more than sixteen thousand dollars should be covered by a state grant. County kind of thing. We're going to go from a uh, uh, premise based story system to a cloud based system. Uh, so we'll have a backup with that. Uh, they're also working on a patch for me to work with in car camera systems. So the in car camera systems right now it's compatible with the system we have. But again, that the software update is not going on anymore. So they're trying to get a patch system. Uh, they're working on that right now so that we can put everything all together like we're doing right now and uh, have our solution. Uh, so that's in the works, but uh, should have those ordered uh, within the next week. Um, and it'll just take a few weeks to go there. We have uh, one person slotted for the uh, part time academy, which will be starting in June. Um, probably by the next meeting, we'll have somebody else slotted. So we'll be getting hopefully two going to the part time academy in June. Um, Getting a lot of uh, interest from people that are interested in part time right now. Uh, not so many full time uh, yet, uh, and haven't found anybody that's uh, already certified to uh, take the position. Obviously, we're short staff, uh, making it work. Uh, things have been things have been working. So I suppose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellently done, Grant, for his button hand. It's helpful. Any questions for Mike? Thank you. Moving on, uh, I want the town manager to update the select board on the pedestrian bridge progress and funding. Okay. Uh, so, all the bid documents were sent to the USDA for approval. They have 30 days to review and comment on it, um, and then we can go out to bid. Uh, so that phase two of our agreement with SD group, which was, was brings us to bid documents and bidding for the construction. Um, so we're in a good spot. We uh, last night we got a DRB permit, a local permit, and our state permits, I believe, are in comment period. Um, so we're well on our way on that project and the planning parts of that project. Um, we have. Uh, we started with $905,512. Um, to date, we spent uh, $89,582.03 um, of town money for phase one and phase two of the planning and permit or drawing, bid drawings, bid documents, contracts, um, ready to go out to bid, which is an average cost maybe a little high for a project this size. Um, but this is my first real big project. So, um, and then we have um, about $10,417 remaining in town funds. Um, we have one more influx from that C group. Um, and we always like to grant sort of the find up for yeah. the hard mm -hmm. construction. So what's the what's the estimate now? What's the estimated cost? Um, what do we anticipate to bid? Well, the there was some an estimated project cost was uh, right around a million, a little over a million, with um, the park improvements on the Daniels block side, but we've kind of taken that out. So we're hoping that we have a budget right now of 790,000 for the project. So we need the bids to come in um, right there, right there, um, which is, I think is doable. So part of this project though involves replacing infrastructure yeah. that was lost during flooding yeah. and that will be reimbursable by FEMA. Correct. So is it possible that the bids are actually going to come back higher? Well is that stuff is that stuff is in the in the original plan. So some of it assuming that, that stuff would be there. So what happened after the hold on. So what happened after the flood? Um the, the existing conditions changed 
because we lost the lower retaining wall. Right. And we so we had to re-engineer some things. That's and we've created in the bidding documents and the contract, we've created FEMA work. Right. And we're following the FEMA procurement so we can have the wall, the lower wall and the upper upper retaining wall repaired, covered by FEMA. So, so the it's, upper wall was in the original bed. Where's the original? Um, somewhere. Or just the just the, lower, just, the, just the lower one was to reinforce the upper wall. Um, but now the upper wall is covered with the pipeline. So that, that turned into a larger project after the flood. So it is possible, though, that the bids could go back higher because of that extra work. But we, when we yes. account for that FEMA right. uh, portion, so we may have to pay out up front because that's reimbursement based. Right. Basically, the non FEMA portion has to be 790. Correct. And when we say we need the town apartment, so this line, this town line would increase. We well, it would. Apartment, right? It, we have to we have to front some money and and wait for payment reimbursement. Yeah. So we spent um so for the park we got a Borac grant and we had fifty thousand allocated for the park and that's both sides. Um, we've spent that in park planning and we've spent eleven thousand in our general fund interest on an additional for additional park planning. So we're up to 60 to 61,000 for that. And we've stopped spending on the park. So we're and that is not not included in the bid for the bridge toward the Daniel side. So we think we're in good shape. We're hopeful that bids will come back aligned with everybody. Mm -hmm. good. And the the wild the FEMA is actually the FEMA stuff because that's going to be random, and it makes it a bigger project for someone, which might be more appealing. Yeah. yeah. So just to clarify for folks, what what is in the folder? The seven ninety, the seven hundred ninety thousand is just for the pedestrian bridge, not anything to do with the park. Is that what you're saying? Um, correct. But we're going to make those improvements. On the main street side, and we've incorporated them in. Okay, and that's the because board. that's such a tight space. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's a path and some benches, okay. and that's going to be included in the branch project. Okay. All right. Do you need anything from us? No. <laughs> Nothing that we can give them anyway. All right, thank you. All right, so I'm going to move us on. Next is item two, select board here from Vermont Huts for the development of a lot next to the cliff line. We should name that lot so don't get reversed. As the cliff, we should. Uh, we should give real estate a name. Ashley, Ashley Cutrate. Cut Cut Where my great aunt Stone Store was. Who? Back in the day. It was Ashley. Ashley's Ashley's, Ashley's coverage was right. the, the business that was there. Wait, yeah. all right. <laughs> Pharmacy. Drugstore. Yeah, drugstore. Yeah. Yeah. There's an old there's an old sign, an old picture of downtown Hardwick that we were going to use for the town plan, the front page of the town plan. But there was a big sign that said drugs, <laughs> and we decided to have a good idea. <laughs> All right, so with that, RJ, tell us about your plans to have a building that doesn't have a big sign that says drugs. <laughs> well, where's the fun in that? In that? Um, well, uh, yeah, thanks Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is RJ Thompson, uh, Executive Director over at Vermont Huts Association. Um, Danny, good good to see you again. It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, for folks who are unaware with our organization, um, we are a 501c3 uh, statewide organization working to uh, develop a, a multi-use year-round um, hut and hostel uh, network serviced uh, by some existing and new trails that uh, we're working with uh, a number of other partners across the state to, to link up um, to those structures. And we're about uh, just under eight years old 
and we currently have two huts on federal land that we own and operate and then 13 additional huts in the network that are operated by other partner organizations that folks can book um, through our uh, website, through our network uh, to, you know, create their, uh, their adventures in the backcountry. And why we're here today is um, the Bellomont Trail, which is going to be uh, for mountain biking and uh, other multi-use um, uh, trail users. We'll run from Canada to Massachusetts and about 40 to 45 miles of that will be co-located on the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. Um, we're currently going through a, a master planning uh, process with SC Group. And uh, through that, and even prior to that, actually, um, we identified some select towns that uh, might make sense to host a, a hostel so that when the trail does come off and out of the forest and out of the mountain into town, um, they would have a uh, place to stay. Um, and so Hardwick obviously is in a prime location uh, right along the LVRT to capitalize on that. And so had some early conversations with um, Sherry and, um, and Opie and, and Eric a little bit just to kind of gauge the interest. Um, and so we've been trying to locate a, a spot in town um, and uh, early, Earlier, maybe last year, we thought we had kind of a lease opportunity lined up and that fell through. But yeah, the the old drugs spot uh, or wherever you guys land on nomenclature um, is uh, an attractive location, obviously. And uh, we'd also, um, I'd, you know, be interested in partnering with the Hardwick Downtown uh, Partnership um, for, for obvious reasons, like one of the ways we've been able to kind of piece together some of this, uh, the trail connectivity is just by partnering with other nonprofit orgs and kind of just working together. So recognizing that there might be a need for space for, for that entity. Um, we have some funding through a prior congressionally directed spending request uh, from Senator Leahy. And so we've kind of earmarked a chunk of that for this, this project. And so we're here tonight to, um, not necessarily seek approval because we still have to go through DRB and, and all that fun stuff, but really wanted to kind of talk about it, um, hear from the select board, uh, understand, um, you know, what, uh, what steps uh, we might need to go through and also show you some uh, draft uh, schematics, uh, exterior rendering, um, thanks to Patrick, and also some very preliminary floor plans um, that this hostel um would would accommodate and in short it'd be about about 32 ish um unit uh so it's not unit 32 bed hostel um with two long-term units upstairs for um locals to um you know rent uh be a kind of studio style sleep two people and then on the ground level um is where we would have kind of that potential common space with the the partnership really just uh Happy to answer questions, uh, go through the drawings if, if that would be helpful, um, and then identify um, action items and next steps out of after this conversation. Great, thanks, RJ. Um, Don't forget to mention the possible public access bathrooms on that first floor for downtown. Uh, absolutely, yeah. When we've and that that's something that we would want to make sure is baked into the design as well. Um, so that folks, you know, the idea is that this this hostel hub would also, you know, could become more of a kind of community, um, just open to the public on that first level. That's kind of a shared space, um, a zone for people to come in. Yeah, utilize restroom if they need to. Um, not necessarily planning to put any kind of um, like cafe or anything on that first level. Maybe there's a small like little gear shop or bike shop or something like that. Um, but really the idea of the hostel is to bring folks off the trail, give them an affordable place to stay, but have them patronize and spend their money at the businesses that already exist. Uh, Great. In town. Um, so uh, Patrick's here too, I assume with. Yeah, I, some, I, I can't see the screen. So I want to drop some enlargements. That Great, you can come around. Um, well, Patrick's coming up. I'll just throw out that the, the two, uh, so overall, like personally, I think it's 
awesome to think about having some lodging for rail traveler, rail trail travelers in Hardwick. I think it's great, and then it's down. Um, the two concerns that it, I've heard are parking, um, which is always a concern, um, and uh, and will this be on? Will it end up on our um, grand list? So, but. But we can talk about that after Patrick's up now. You can show us a picture. Sure. So, uh, so this is a. Can everyone see the different Yeah. Close enough. So this is this is based on a uh, photograph. So it's fairly accurate. Uh, but this shows this this is this is the site we've been talking about. Uh, and so it has a similar uh, massing to the old building that used to be there. So what RJ was talking about is that the lowest level is the most public level. The second level would be the, the hostel bunk sleeping areas. And the third level would be the uh, uh, studio apartments. So in terms of the building, we haven't really gotten into a lot of detail yet, but the, the, the one of the concepts of the building was that it would be a... Uh, uh, with a uh, mass wood building, and it would be used as much local material as possible. And so that was sort of one of the themes. A lot of the buildings that uh, the HUD Association does have you know, energy efficient, and trying to they try and be as, as green as possible. So what you're seeing here is it is it essentially a, it, it's a wood building. This is an idea of some solar panels south is that way. So basically, it's a simple little building, more or less the mass and the, and the proportion of the old equipment to be there. Okay. So that's that's the rendering. You can sense the rest. Yeah, you see this again? It's big enough. So here's the here's, here's the main street. This is the adjacent to the hip joint. It's here. This is the ledge in the back. This is this one here is the is the side street. So the this is the cor a corner entrance airlock. This is the some vertical circulation elevator to get up in the building. This is an idea of where a more public shared bathroom would be on the main level. This is this open area RJ was talking about. This reception, a a kitchen, and then some office space. The second level going up, these are the, the bunk, the bunk levels, which are a combination of private and uh, <coughs> shared rooms. The, the entire building, because it is a new building, has to be um, fully accessible to be, to, to be coded. And but it also has to be fully sprinkled because of the occupancy use. And, and this is the third floor. That we've talked about. This is these two kind of micro apartments on the third level. Um, is there a possibility of uh, parking spots behind that building up on the ledge that could be used for at least the two long term? That's a good question. I have the lot goes back in place. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't seen, uh, uh, it hasn't. I, we haven't seen that official survey, mm -hmm. so it's difficult to really confirm what we can do mm -hmm. until it's, it's surveyed properly. Um, that also impacts the, we've made some assumptions based on tax maps and, and Google Earth to come up with this footprint. Mm -hmm. The next step would be if there's, you know, if there's interest, we would need to do a proper survey to so confirm the accurate. And at, at that point, we'd be able to determine if, in fact, we can get uh, is part of there. There are some opportunities, and if you notice, a lot of the other buildings actually use the grade difference to get accessible access off the map. Mm -hmm. So um, that would work. Uh, there's no reason why that would be an opportunity for this as well. It would be great. Yeah, my ideal, actually, to get back. Yeah. That'd be great if that was possible. Because we you know parking in these downtown sites is job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Maybe Archer, you could talk a little bit about the parking. Yep. Yeah, thanks. And and thank you, Patrick, for, for being there with the drawings. Uh, had all intentions of being there. And then, of course, uh, snowstorm. And, and so uh, I think the roads are improving, but uh, child care, we're balancing right now. Um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> Toy Story is the babysitter at the moment. Um, so parking, I've chatted with um, Isaac. Uh, Jacobs about utilizing some of his spaces and initial conversations were that he did have capacity. This was, um, I, I want to say mid winter when we chatted or early winter. And so the next step is to kind of circle back and say, you know, how, how things are looking, but it did sound like he had capacity. And then the other option um, that we were told to pursue, and I did reach out, haven't heard back um, was, was Dwayne Wells. Um, so we are pursuing um, those uh, opportunities. And I think that what we would do presumably is come to the DRB, um, you know, with a proposal that was, you know, or less they wanted to, you know, add a conditions, like we would prove this obviously without or not, but not without parking being secured in some way, shape or form. So wondering what would satisfy that like what type of agreement would would we need to have in hand you know to satisfy that condition um is it a you know one year two year kind of year to year type situation um not not certain how that you'd recommend we go about that well that would be up to them for yeah sure. i don't know if I'm, yeah but i would think the investment you folks are making you'd want something a lot more permanent than year to year Absolutely. That <laughs> problem, I, RJ, the problem I see with parking is downtown parking is at capacity now with the existing businesses and buildings that are there. Um, so unless there's a plan to, to add, add back at least the five parking spots that we're losing by putting a building there, you see what I'm saying? Um, well, presumably the main. I mean, if I say Dwayne Wells is a good one, obviously that's not being utilized now. Uh, but as far as right around this building, well, I don't know we do have uh, the property that's coming on the where the inn on the river was, and we could choose to have some parking on that, is that, allowed? In that area. It is really, yeah, as long as you're not putting a structure or anything gravel, gravel. really. Gravel. Yeah. Yeah. You can do a gravel water there. Well, I was just going to say that we're so bigger. The bigger yeah. concern would be not necessarily car parking, but uh, bike parking. I because, thought that was inside. Which, which there might be the inside house. for the yeah. house. Uh, so because the primary, the primary use is going to be recreation. So it's going to be biking. So it's really just enough parking for the two long-term units, mm -hmm. not... 30 people driving. The, the goal is to have people biking. And that's very different. I think that's very different than cars. Yeah. That's the, that's part of the goal. Yeah, the yeah, well, both Dwayne Wells and the motel property are perfectly good examples yeah. of parking that is not being used now. That's all I'm saying. Is, yeah, we could, I don't believe Isaac has any of the extra. I don't know where he's coming up with that. Uh, I, so down to Dwayne's is certainly up to the, which is not that far out the motel. I, right. I also assume that there's going to be people staying there that do drive in the town, right? It's yeah. not going to be all bikers all the but time. They might they'd be willing to walk that distance, I'm sure. For sure. Yeah. There's also they might even park up and by the rail. Right, right. Yeah. right, right. Because if they're so, biking right there. It sounds like it definitely can be addressed. And yeah. when the Legion builds their double decker parking garage. <laughs> so um, and another question about do you would you be seeking a, a property tax exemption? Yeah, that's a great question. And we haven't chatted, you know, we haven't chatted with our, our real estate attorney on that yet. Um, obviously it would it would make sense for us to do that, but if there was uh, I mean, I can understand why the town wouldn't be jazzed about that. So um maybe there's an opportunity to talk about some type of pilot payment. Um to you know alleviate those concerns but again haven't haven't gotten that far down down the road with our real estate attorney to see if that's even feasible and if that's a if that's a, if that's like a showstopper then then the answer would be no we wouldn't do we wouldn't want to we wouldn't do that um 
you know, we want to have, have it be a, you know, a, a mutually uh, beneficial project. So that, I don't think that's a deal. I mean, in my personal opinion, I think that's not a deal breaker. It's more just the curiosity of it. Like if that, well, as long as there's something, I mean, it, yeah. There's going to be more value to having, there's going to be more value to having 34 people staying every night to Hardwick than right. tax. I mean, that's, it's going to add a lot more revenue. Then we have the taxes. Yeah. So I agree with that. It's not a showstopper. I don't know. So I have another question. Um, uh, I, I re my, my memory is, is very poor, but I recall, uh, a figure that you threw out last year for for amount of money that you'd allocated to do a Hardwick hostel that doesn't yeah. align with what Patrick has just presented us. So I'm just wondering, in general terms, if you think you have the budget to build this. Yeah, I think we had originally carved. Originally, we were going to be upfitting a structure, so we had carved off. So we we have a right now we have a three point eight million dollar. Uh, CDS requests, but that's across multiple projects. And we had carved off 600 grand for Hardwick. What Patrick has there, we haven't even really gotten into, but it's going to be somewhere between probably one and 1 1.2 million, I would think. If Patrick's shaking his head up and down, then that's great. If he's shaking it left and right, then we, we should probably just uh, dig in more. <laughs> <He's on total. laughs> no, I mean, it's a good, we have, again, we haven't really gotten to that. That yeah, got to the point where we would do the feasibility of the third floor, for example, onto the third floor is less critical to their bottom line. So we really haven't got we need to really dig into it. It seems like you could get some state assist because you're happy it's housing. It's all about yeah. housing. Yeah, so there's a there's a whole fundraising campaign that we would we would execute, you know, and I think that it would be our desire to create that long term housing, and I have an email out with um, the interim executive director over at Memorial Housing just to see if there's an interest in, you know, I know it's only two units, but it's two units that we don't have at the moment. So um, curious to see what, what their response is. I did reach out to VHCB. They pointed me over to Memorial. You're losing me, RJ. You're losing me with Memorial Housing. Yeah, so you know. <laughs> It's true that Hardwick really needs um, some missing middle housing. Yeah, something besides the small housing. Okay, yeah. Und understood. Uh, um, but I understand your point too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fair. Um, and and so in any event, we we would develop a a, a campaign, you know, to to um, fund the the gap, whatever that gap may be. Or if it's looking like some of our other projects um, uh, that are earmarked under the CDS requests are going to take too long, we may carve off some more funds for this project, given that it's, you know, kind of moving along in a, in a seemingly positive direction at the moment. RJ, what is your, oh, sorry, go ahead. what's your ideal timeline for the project? Let's move it along. How quick can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I mean, originally, you know, these things always take longer than we want, right? Um, I, I would love to have, you know, permits in in hand, you know, by, you know, the end of summer, um, if that'd be ideal. Um, and then, you know, we could, we could move forward after that. I'm not sure if we break ground before winter, if that would make any sense. Um, but I think if we move quickly, maybe we have stuff in hand midsummer. Um, and, and that might change the scope, but we do have contractors who, um, are really interested in the project. Um, not so much the site work, those, you know, those we'll have to get excavators and whatnot on site, but as far as builders go, we do have a couple who are interested in the project and that's actually part of a, a workforce development program. Um, both Youth Build and Vermont Youth Conservation Corps are interested in working with us on this. Um, and Dan, who's also on the call, call here, our project manager has been in, in kind of close contact with those folks. Good so. job. <laughs> Um, yeah, all that to say, this, the sooner the better. Just like, just like every project we try to do. And um, realistically, though, I, I, I don't. You know, it's April. Um, got a lot of stuff going on, as as do all builders. So, uh, maybe we break ground before the fall. 
but maybe it's next spring. I was just going to add that um, you know, this is pretty quick and broad brush, and, and the reason, part of the reason for that is we don't want to incur a lot of fee on this, you know, on this project if there's not support from the town. So really, the main thing from our process is we're ready to commit, but we want to make sure it's going to happen before we commit resources to move forward. Is that is this our executive session that we're discussing? Uh, I think we have an executive executive session for this. What do we need to find? I'd like to talk about now. Okay. I think that's our executive. Right. Yes, I think we. I don't know. It, 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 it incorporates two pieces of property. Okay. Our executive session. Okay. Okay. We're discussing that. Okay. So it sounds like we're giving information in the public meeting, then we're having an executive session about some of the details, and then we'll just with us. Just with that. Okay. So, also just curious, how much do you foresee rent being in these two um, permanent apartments, and how much for a bed for a night? Yeah, that just and yeah, I think the uh, again we haven't gotten too far, but our whole mission is to is to make things accessible for folks. Um, uh, currently, pro forma for a bed, like there's a bunk room. Um, I think it's around. 50 or 60 bucks for a bed, like a twin bed. Uh, a private room is somewhere around uh, 120 and 140 bucks for a private room that sleeps for, again, um, trying to make it, you know, relatively affordable for the passersby and folks on the trail. And we would just look to comp comparable uh, rent for the long-term housing up, up top. Um, like you said, middle uh, middle housing is, is, is lacking. Um, so I'm not sure where, where we'll, if it's two units at uh, so like four or 500 square feet, they're pretty small. So, you know. Yeah, thanks. Great. And then uh, I guess, I guess a question, um, what, you know, as, as far as process goes, we've never acquired, tried to acquire a, a parcel of town owned land. So I'm just wondering, does it go, would it go out to kind of like some kind of, uh vote or refer like referendum or does the town does the select board have the authority to kind of make that decision i think as i recall the select board can and anybody can correct me but i believe the select board can sell land and then there's a period where isn't there a period where people can protest that's purchase oh, that's 40 it's the notice oh. in the paper and then they have 30 days that's Purchasing for, for, for the purchase. purchase. Not to sell. I'll be saying that's for purchase. No, no, it's not. No, we have to post notice in the paper that we're selling something, and okay. then it's the same process. Yeah, we had to do that for a little corner parcel. Um, oh, right. Where was, and we had to do it for um, Caspian Ave. So, yes, we do have to put a public notice in the paper about our desire to sell such and such and then give people, I think it's a 30 day window to contest. They have to get, a, they have to get 5% of, they have to get 5% um, of the voters in order to, to like contest it. If contesting it means it goes to a town vote, that's all. Correct, yeah, if they get 5% of the voters, yes. It's no different than anything else. Yeah. They would, they, in the form, they contest it in the form of a petition. Right, so yeah. to a general petition for a vote. Correct. Right. So we have to post it. We still decide, RJ. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Or, or we could, because we just went through this, or we could go to vote prior to that, but we would, I don't think we would. I think we would make the decision for this law. And for, especially for this law as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. And one, one sure you've, you've had some discussions, RJ, about co-locating some some town program. I'm not sure how that worked into your transfer. Is that is that part of a condition to to provide some space for my understanding was that it was of interest in um you know, sharing some resources. One of the things that works well with these kinds of you know, public floor spaces is staffing is always a challenge. So if you can if you can uh you know, multiply staffing so that folks coming by have a human being to, to talk with and either 
ask about the town or rent hostel, um, there might be some synergy steps. <clears throat> and whether there's some interest in that, I'm not sure how that plays into conditions. Yeah, there was some discussion about the downtown partnership having a little bit of office space there and potentially like a visitor sort of like just information and stuff about downtown, about Hardwick in general. So there's stuff there at the end of the day. So there would maybe be something where we would have a person there. Have a person there at some point. Uh, it's a little too far, far out to, yeah. to imagine, but yeah. Okay. Um, and then the trade off of having the access to the public restrooms for the town is a big thing because we know that there's not a lot of places, especially because after four o'clock, you have to go to the bathroom in your downtown. <laughs> so, do we have more information? We get ready to move on. We have more information we want to gather right now. I think this looks great. I mean, conceptually, it's a, it's a, it looks like a great project. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us. And thank you, Patrick, for being there. Look forward to seeing you all in person um, sooner than later. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, RJ. Take care. It's nice meeting all of you. All right, Jim. Um, all right, next up is item three. Town manager discussed potential paths forward for the replacement of the Harvest Farms Road Bridge. Path B. No pun intended. So um, I would have had more, but the trans canceled their meeting with me today. We can skip over this. Um, I I can just tell you where I'm at in the project. Um, so. So the Secretary of Transportation reached out asking if we needed any assistance based on um, phone calls that they received from um, senators, um, local senators, and representatives. Uh, so we have VTrans Health. Um, they have since offered us a two-lane bridge um, with no technical support. And they estimated the cost to install the two lane bridge, which would be fairly difficult in that location at $125,000, not reimbursable by FEMA because we've already done the repair work, um, temporary repair work. So uh, that's why I requested a meeting and an extra wide bridge rather than a two lane bridge, which is slightly smaller than a two lane bridge and slightly larger than the bridge that's there now. Um, so hopefully when we meet, I think it's either next Thursday or following Thursday, or following Thursday, um, we'll be able to get a better idea of what is feasible there and really dial in the costs. Um, if we do the, the work, um, it'll obviously be less expensive if we hire somebody to do it. Um, I also want to throw out some options to them. Um, potentially just putting in two large culverts side by side. So there's no live load as someone that's crossing. And that would probably be the most cost effective. It's just, we have to get approval from agency. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. Okay. So I'm going. I've been in communication with the lagasses and the Nautilus. Is if you did get the extra wide bridge, that still involves work, I assume, because the the you know, approaches and abutments are probably narrower than that. Right? The the abutments, there are temporary abutments, and they're built on top of the approach. Mm -hmm. um, those could be just two. Okay. And the hundred and twenty. That's still for a temporary bridge, yes. right? Because we're that's for yeah. 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 I think it's a little high. Yeah. Um, like we installed the single lane bridge, and I think it was like, I believe it was like twenty two thousand. It could be wrong. We might have been even less. But that was us doing the work, us doing the trucking, us buying. I think we had um, concrete waste blocks already. But those would have been factored into the project cost. Don't quote me on that price. Okay. Well, thank you for. Continuing to work on that and pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. um, next is item four. I select board to consider providing a letter of support for the civic standard grant application. 
which I read, and we have looks like we have Tara and Rose on the on the Zoom. Um, hello. Hello. Hi. So tell us about your um, your grant application. So this is for the Better Places program, which is um, through the uh, state ACCD, I think. Um, it's a matching grant and the way it works is you raise, um, well, for a temporary project, which is what we're suggesting we would do, we would raise $5,000, they would match it with 10. So it's something we've been working on for quite a while. We've had a few different proposals that we've come to them with. Nothing has quite landed. But now we're coming with this idea of a, a series of concerts. And this seems to be the best fit because they're supposed to be free, uh, preferably outdoor events. And so we're talking about between May and September, three different concerts in locations around the town, walkable downtown. We're merging this with the idea of the Springfest uh, concert because Kiwanis asked us to produce that. Um, what was the street dance last year? They sort of asked the Civic to take that on. So we're kind of folding that into this proposal. So that would be the first one, um, the night of the parade. Um, and that would be in Atkins Field. The second one would be in the middle of July and would possibly be in the parking lot behind the Legion. And the third one would be in September and would be in a location to be decided, possibly back in Atkins Field. But we did talk to the townhouse about reserving that space um, because of weather being slightly iffy and also because we might just decide that that's the best spot for it. It's a pretty big band that has a big draw. And so we um, don't want to have to worry about noise stuff and we also want to make sure we can accommodate a lot of people so that one that one might end up being inside so basically the grant is going to support paying the musicians paying for some food paying for some staff time possibly allowing the civic to buy a little bit more equipment um, for ongoing concerts and events uh, and that's about it we would crowdfund through our own channels we're really not asking the town for very much, you know, in any like capacity or um, staffing way. Uh, they just like the program really likes to see that you have the backing of, you know, somebody in your community, some official body or person in your community. So um, that's why we're coming to you. Great. I can make a motion to, uh, should we direct the town manager to write, write the letters or make a motion to, uh, <laughs> give the big power to write the letters already for, written. Uh, for the civic standard grant application? Only if I can put in there at the very bottom. Yes, bring back the reggae fest. Yes. <laughs> I thought we were saying a link to your karaoke. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion. Give me a second. And I'll, se I'll second it. Thank you. So, Tim's on the board. Tim, <laughs> second. Um, um, uh, any more discussion about letter support for this? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, Great. That's so motion carries. Thank you guys for taking this on. Um, I really enjoy the concerts at the the concert we had down there at Memorial Day. I can feel it's fun. Yeah. Um, the Fiddler's contest as well before the radio. Oh, <laughs> Fiddler's yeah. contest. I was there. I bet <laughs> that would be good. You conceived of it. Oh boy. That I that was kind of no, bringing Danny back in. <laughs> All right. So. Next is item five, uh, business manager Casey Rowell to present the fiscal year 24 quarter three budget update. And thank you to the civic standards. Thank you. All right. Okay. Casey. Um, so I'm sorry I can't share it on my screen, but um, you do have it there in front of you. Um, we'll talk about revenues first. Um, so 
kind of, I feel like it's a broken record here. So we are on track to meet budget. Um, basically, we're about um, 81% right now. Um, we should be at 75. So we're slightly ahead. Um, but basically, everything looks good. Um, office revenues are a little low just because of um, recording fees, zoning permit fees, and other licenses and fees are kind of lower than expected. But then we have other revenue to sort of make up for that. Um, interest income is helping us because deposit rates are pretty good right now. Um, so that's, we're fortunate there. But overall, revenue looks pretty good um, at about 81%. Great. Questions? Looks good. Yeah. Okay. So these attachments, these are all with the minute attachments anyway, if people want to see them. Um, okay. expenses are at 81% when we expect to be at 75. Um, however, that is with flood expenses. Um, so I did, um, kind of laid out for you, like without the flood, we'd be at 71.39. And if we assume that we're going to get a 75% reimbursement on flood, we'd be at 73.98. Um, and so that's still right around 75%. So we're in good shape. Um, I guess the, the only thing is that we have to consider is that we're going to have to sit on some of this money and it may not come in before the end of the fiscal year. Um, we'll just basically create a receivable. It's, um, deferred, it'll be deferred revenue. Um, but yeah, we, um, we're, we're in pretty good shape with the expenses as well. Quick question, Casey, when we get FEMA reimbursement, we haven't gotten, oh, yeah. we have got some. So we've got like thousand that's it does that show up in revenues or it would um it yes that would be um other revenue it's gonna be in the grant no actually no it's not it's in the um it's actually in the capital fund i think um i gotta think of, i'm trying i can't remember off the top of my head where we put it it's either in other revenue or capital and i can't tell you off the top of my head sorry um but yeah it's it would be yes i think it's in that other but it would show up as revenue as we get it, yes. But we've gotten so little so far out of what we spent, so. And I'm assuming that, uh, so just seeing that highway is a little bit under budget and police is a little under budget, those highway probably because it's been a light winter and there's been less overtime and Oh. It's been the two things in highway that are helping are salt and diesel because we weren't anticipating a fixed diesel rate um, yeah. and we did get one. And so we're, you know, we're way under for that really. And then salt, we had, um, I think we're probably like 30 grand under budget on that right now, just because we haven't used as much. So yeah. that's, that's helping us for sure. Okay, great. Any other questions about the expenses? Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Um, all right. Next, uh, new business or old business or select board. Um, I was, I'm just making a plan to visit the rec committee and show them the draft of the park schematic that we have and uh, see if they are interested in helping to think about fundraising because that's part of the role. Assist in fundraising for town outdoor facilities. So I'm just saying that I'm going to do that. And hoping that I'll get some um, interest from that group coordinating with downtown or the town. Uh, anybody else? Oh, new business. I'd love to discuss the letters of support thing from the town. Okay. And whether or not, uh, you know, what the parameters are, what we want people to show us before they request a letter of support, or whether we should even be entertaining all these letters of support. Maybe we just support our own things and then and we send other, you know, things to 
committees or groups in the town that like in some ways that when when people are applying for a grant, they're looking for um, collaboration with other groups. It's not really about whether to, you know, because we don't necessarily have as many, I don't know exactly how to say it, but it feels like it's, it's a great word. It feels like it's um yeah, it's, it's a great like, word, Sherry. What's the letter support really worth if it's yeah. well, from, it's from, us show it's from, from another whole group that's also working with that, you know? Well, if they don't have the support of the town, then they might not get the grant. And that, my question right. is, but I'm just thinking it? about the um, and, and in the past, we've also had some issues where we have supported where the select board has had a letter of support written. And then the grant was, I mean, part of the policy that we developed, however unwritten it was, um, was based on a problem that we had where the grant was applied for, the town supported it, and then we didn't know what happened with it. Um, and then the grant didn't actually end up happening. Uh, the activity in the narrative didn't actually happen the way it was. So, Sad. So, right, because with the town, it wasn't a town grant, it was no another organization grant. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. Collaboration is a great word. And that's what I, I believe is part part of a support letter. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be looked at when we support letters. Mm -hmm. I think there are there's certain cases, maybe not as recent as tonight. Where we have a, a great organization for a great cause with a great, 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 everything great, 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 but there is no the collaboration is not there yes. yeah. in I the think, effort. And I think yeah. We chose to so I just wanna I just wanna keep it on our on our you know front burner to talk about whether or not we develop a policy, whether we have something written, whether we have a an application possibly where people really have to think about why they're asking what they're asking for. Support and and spell it out, you know, and have an even, you know, playing field. So they're presenting the same information. Every any group that's asking for that support is presenting the same information. And I am bare minimum to make it fair mm -hmm. and equitable is that we have to see the letter of support before we sign it. So or the application because that it, without that it's just well, maybe some of us right. have had a conversation. Maybe some of us haven't. And it's not enough information, but I think even like the Civic Center room, we just did, we have not a year with it. I tried to go to the way, but like, yeah, where well, I mean, they took a lot out of us, yeah, but <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not saying it was a bad thing, I'm just saying mm -hmm. we don't, yeah, so maybe really. we could create a simple cheat sheet. <laughs> maybe <laughs> equity community can help with this. I think that <laughs> creating a policy around support for outside, but like. Mm -hmm. Nonprofits, other businesses, other organizations. I think that that it should be looked at with an equity lens, mm -hmm. and that's like the equity committee asked about what what we do, how we can include that, yeah. and the that, and that's a good example. Mm -hmm. um, I would throw in that um, I don't think the town, or I don't think the town. This is just my opinion. Um, writing letters of support for private businesses should not. Should not be done by towns. So you look at nonprofits. It's a private business. No, no, no. no a private, a private for-profit entity should not be asking for letters of support no. from a town. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I understand what you're trying to achieve here, but the problem is, is coming from being involved in nonprofit, and, and non for profit organizations, sometimes they're no. That's like nonprofits. I'm not talking about them. Right, but what I'm saying is, I don't like to distinguish this for profit and non profit. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah. All, you, all, all that means is they, they, they got a different IRS status. And they're and then, still doing things, still doing things to make money. They're still drawing salaries. I took the time, which is something else we should do, is look at 990s of some of these organizations like Vermont Huss. And you, you know, it, it, it's it's a big wheel. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm just saying, I don't know I, that distinction. I get what you're saying. I don't know if we're going to catch what we want. And then there's, the equity thing is a great, great way yeah. to send it to work. 
Sure. There's also the thought that we don't do letters of support for anyone. Mm -hmm. Because then we can't say yes or no. And then if we say yes to somebody and then right. we say no to somebody, we're gonna to have to justify why we're saying no. Yeah. So if we just say no period. No period. Because it's a really fine line between what we really own or what we as a town are doing or rest is a great example of something that is really intricate, you know. I mean, we support it financially. Mm -hmm. We support Hardwick Rescue financially. So right. we so I would say. I mean, that could be in a policy that could be written in like it, it they're in our annual budget. I think, it would be a shame. I think it would be a shame if we said no, because absolutely, because we don't we want no, to the spirit of collaboration. But I right. think having having a process so that way everyone's treated fairly and makes and the same with the same. And so that we're all getting the same information. Mm -hmm. would, yeah, I don't see us being able to say no because we're too close to some organizations to not right. work with them. I but think creating a policy is a way for us to say no. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. It just, in, the yeah. In some situations, like for instance, just because I have been so involved in the whole downtown thing, you know, they introduced that better places grant at a downtown um, conference. We talked about it. it it's a great uh, program. It's on the Shopping block right now, so let's get some of that in hardware. But um, I think that the uh, having the support of the downtown partnership might have been might be a better fit the, for the showing support. collaboration right. for things that are happening in the community downtown, better well, than the town, for instance. Yes, but I don't know. I mean, you know, Ooh, you know like you want both. Right. I think it's dependent on the relationship you have with that, right? Going back to collaboration, if you have a relationship, if they if you're all interacting and engaging and you see the organization and what they're doing, and then yeah, happy to give some awesome. yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to just as a quick takeaway, I'm happy to look into like a checklist slash policy. Um I think it should be a little more like maybe there's policy, but maybe there's also a tool. That the town manager's office can use when somebody asks and they can say here's the checklist if you have all these things on the checklist then you can give it to me for the select board so that way there's less like mm -hmm. back and forth that that means, no, um, that sounds great so i can work on that and bring it to the equity committee awesome that's great anything else so uh i would Love to entertain a motion to go into an executive session uh, for personnel to include the town manager and police chief. So moved. Is RG waiting for the executive session, though? I don't think he's saying that. No. Oh, okay. That was a really good question. Okay. Uh, second. So there was a motion. Sorry, do you do the motion? No, who did the motion? Danny did the motion. Danny did the motion. Haley did the second. Are you want to do executive session uh, for personnel to go to the PSA for 13? All in right. favor? Uh, all in favor of executive session, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So. Okay.